All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so happy that you are all here tonight. This is our year end finale of Pangea's Playhouse, um, and I welcome you to it. So I'm very thrilled to have you all join us. My name is Ellie Iverson. I'm the owner and event producer behind Edgy Experiences. We say we do creative gathering solutions, whether that's in person or virtual, you know, we're trying to find ways to gather people and get everyone together so that we can celebrate and enjoy company, which has been very hard this year, but I think it's very important. And I've mentioned this before, but it's definitely worth mentioning again, in times like this, art is an incredibly healing tool, a healing tool and the community that gathers around it is very resilient and supportive and by being here you're a part of this community and if you can go ahead and look in the gallery view to see all the faces if you don't have your video on just go go ahead and say hi if you're on um to just show everybody that we're not alone we're doing this together Hello. and we've made it this far <laughs> yeah so um I'll, I'll keep everybody muted. Don't worry, there will be plenty of time for us to, um, to make a lot of noise all together as a group later on. But I, I do appreciate you and I'm glad that we're all here together. So on we go. As you all know, Zoom is a fickle beast and we do our best with it. And especially when it comes to the art world. So it's not meant for theatrical performances but we're making it work. So I really appreciate your patience and flexibility as we navigate this new world. And we have a lot of really incredible talent with us tonight as you may have seen at previous Pangea's Playhouse shows and maybe you haven't, but uh, this is a great community to be a part of. So a uh, few things uh, if you can keep your mics muted until we you know offer for you to to go ahead and unmute we'd appreciate that just so we can give attention to our performers and uh, if you want to share positive comments, go ahead and do that in the chat box. Definitely, definitely share, you know, all of your excitement in the chat box when it comes to the performances themselves. And if you're having technical difficulties, you can go ahead and message Amy. I'm going to show you Amy really quick, who's been a part of the Pangea's team for since the beginning. So there's Amy and you can message her and she can Hello. help you out. <laughs> And then uh, we've got Doug, who's another member of the Edgy Experiences team. And Doug will be helping with some of the videos that we're doing. So there's Doug. All right. Hello. <laughs> All right. So that's how we're doing it tonight. If there's any reason you can't join us for the whole thing or you need to dip out at any point, we are recording it. And so we will be sending it out to everyone after the show ends. So you can always watch it there or share it with more of your friends and family as we go on. Uh, on to the show itself. So obviously this experience would not exist without this community and people who come in as attendees and especially our sponsors who have added you know, more donations to just make it a thing that we can do with a team behind it and, you know, test out this new technology. And uh, we have over, we have about 45 participants online now. We've had over 60 tickets sold for this event itself. And later on during intermission, I'll show you what we've done with Pangea's this year. Um, so I just want to thank all of you for being here. Uh, tonight, we've got about seven performers, about we've got seven performers, and they'll be uh, performing for about 10 minutes each, and we'll have a brief intermission around 745 so you can refill your drink or take a bathroom break. Okay, so on to our first performer. Uh, I am very excited that we have a rock and roll legend with us, Nick Hoffman. Nick's played with members of the Wrecking Crew in LA, started Womb Man Records, and is CEO of Nick Hoffman Guitars, maker of the Brian Jones Tribute Guitar, as well as the Signifier and the Offender. If you like what you hear tonight, uh, Nick has some of his Womb Man releases on YouTube, Music for Your Wedding Night, and Mr. E's. We will be including the links in the follow-up email. Uh, but Nick, I want to go ahead and introduce you so that you can let us know what we're about to hear. 
and we've got to unmute you so everybody can hear. <laughs> okay, well, I'm really privileged and honored to be here at uh, where technology meets art at Pangea's Playhouse and uh, the genius of Ellie in putting this together, I so appreciate. And uh, my first song is going to be Jingle Bell Rock. And we'll go on from there. And Happy New Year 2021. Woo! All right. All right. Thanks, Nick. And let's go ahead and roll the video. <laughs> One message for you, in addition, in addition to thanking, thanking Ellie and her able crew, crew for, for presenting me on Pangeas, I want to wish you Merry Christmas, Christmas baby. You sure did treat, treat me nice. Yeah, baby. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, baby. Sure did treat me nice. Baby, sure did treat me nice. You bought me a liquor store for Christmas, and now I'm living in paradise. I'm feeling mighty fine. I got good music on my stereo Feeling mighty fine Yeah, I got good music on my radio I feel like I want to kiss you the mistletoe Santa, Santa came down, down the chimney, chimney. Yeah, about yeah, uh, half past, past three, three. Uh, uh, You want to see all the pretty, pretty presents. presents You are a rap for me Merry 
Christmas, baby. You've been as sweet as you can be. I'm drink this morning. Down a chimney, you know, about 20 past four. Said, I see all those presents. You know, I want to see some more. Merry Christmas, baby, you've been sweet as you can be. Breakfast on a little like a Christmas tree. And uh, as a conclusion of my portion of this event, uh, we're going to do a little surfing in a winter wonderland.
Amazing. Per usual. Nick Hoffman, everybody. Great, great start to the show. Uh, Nick, we'll get you on for the uh, finale um, bowing at the end. So everybody make sure to stick around for the whole thing if you can, because we, we do want to bring all the audio or all the artists up so that we can really uh, give them our appreciation. But, you know, this is a variety show and we are mixing it up once again. And so I'm very excited to uh, bring our next artist on board. And this is going to be our live artist of the evening. And so we have Isak Hernandez joining us once again. And Isak, as a little bit more background, he co-founded Mercury Press International with his wife, Nancy Black, where they produce media content for nonprofit and commercial clients. He wrote and directed the award-winning documentary, Better Together, narrated by Christopher Lloyd about the history of activism in Santa Barbara, starting with the 1969 oil spill. His photographs from decades as a journalist are featured in the monographic book, Difference Makers, Portraits of Leaders in the Arts, Social Justice, and the Sustainability. He is always looking for new creative challenges and has painted hundreds of self-portraits to be featured in a future book, I'm Not My Face. He has also written, produced, and directed four plays in collaboration with his children. And so um, we had Isak on board with us for our very first Pangea's Playhouse, and he just blew everyone out of the water with this uh, painting that he created during the show. And so we are going to be doing that again and see what he comes up with. So Isak, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Let's see what I come up with. <laughs> So I'm going to start right away. I'm going to keep painting during the whole performance and during the intermission and at the end, you'll see what I got. And there's a, I started mixing up kind of a palette. And I'm just going to talk about life and painting. Like life is scary. You don't know what's going to happen. Do you have a blank canvas ahead of you? Oops, I just ruined it. And I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I just happen to have yellow. I, I have to admit I'm very nervous. I haven't painted in a, since the last time almost paint my the solvent became solid from not using it. Luckily I have all it. But anyway, here's yellow. You're welcome to ask questions. Talk to me. And it, Ellie will read them out. Then I feel like red. This will be more fun when you guys are playing music, if I can paint to the music. To the bagpipes. I wonder what color. I think bagpipes are blue. And so the whole idea of painting is I'm ruining the canvas, right? It was a perfectly good canvas. And but the thing about about it is if in, even if I mess up, I can paint over it. And I try to apply that. It's a good meditation because it helps me in life when I'm afraid. I think of painting because you can always paint over it. I guess if you die, you cannot paint over it, but as long as you stay alive. Isaac, I have a, a question for you. Did um, From Stephanie, did you start with any kind of idea or do you let the paint guide you? And sometimes I start with an idea. Today, I'm not. When I do a self-portrait, I will start with an idea. And usually, when I do a self-portrait, I try unflattering light a lot of the time. And I see, because it's, the idea is how to make something beautiful out of something ugly. You know, like I don't consider this necessarily pretty, but my goal through the night will be to make something beautiful out of whatever this is. And uh, so, no, I don't start with an idea. With abstract painting, I don't start with an idea. With uh, with uh, when I do live self portraits, I don't I don't like painting from photographs. I may I start just with a lighting and with a pose, but it evolves. That's why I don't like painting from a photograph because I made my mood may change, so my pose may change, my angle of view could change. 
So, I mean, if you want, you can see my, I can even take requests about what color to use next. And I have other colors that are not in my palette. So you're welcome to tell me what color you want. <laughs> All right, so we've you can see the the paint colors that Isak is using now. Go ahead and put it in the chat if you want to see him use a certain color. I don't we'll see. know what I'm doing. <laughs> and a lot of the times that's how I approach photography or film. I don't like to know too much about what I'm doing. Because then I know what's gonna turn out. I'm not very hard, I'm very unprofessional filmmaker. <laughs> okay, let's get some more blue. So when I'm done with this painting, we're gonna auction it and half of the proceeds are gonna go to Creative Arts and Music Association. Kama. I love that. So, if you're not uh, familiar with Kama, they promote music and arts and dancing in the community, in schools. They have concerts, and they've been hit pretty hard <clears throat> by this pandemic. So, this painting is dedicated to Kama. That's amazing, Isaac. I have two questions and one color recommendation. I've, I've that okay. both the Stephanies that are performing tonight have requested purple. Purple, okay, I have some purple right here already. Where and do you want the purple? Right here? <laughs> I think it's very dark purple. Maybe I'll add some white. This is my white. And then I do have two final questions for you. So these questions are, do you, from Davey, do you usually like to paint to music? And if so, what kind is your favorite music to paint to? And whatever is playing, I, I'm from Spain. So here's some purple. See the purple is very dark and needs some white. And the, so I, I used to listen to a lot of folk music from Spain. And, but I like reggae. I like classical music. I like a, Uh, I don't know what music I've been to. Mm -hmm. Christmas music. Well, we definitely have some music on the lineup for tonight. Okay, so we have one, our one final question for you uh, from Carl Quinn One. When you are out in nature, do you see images that you later want to capture in a painting? Yeah. Um, I do a lot of oil pastels. Well, if you look at my paint cam, this is a painting, it's a art, well, I don't, I don't know if you call this nature, but this is in Oakland. And this is a painting I did from an oil pastel. And uh, that's another abstract that I'm working on. So I normally don't paint with oils in nature, but I will paint with, uh, with the oil pastels. And I have, I have a box of oil pastels here. <laughs> I just painted the floor. <laughs> My wife might not be very happy about that. I have a lot of, uh, so this is the size I work with oil pastels. And uh, I paint, well, some of these are from photographs. Anyway, this is the size I paint. And then I, I may transfer into an oil painting. I don't know why my okay. camera got really dark all of a sudden. Well, Isaac, we're gonna be checking in with okay. you as we go, um, but we are getting ready to move on to our next performer. But thank you, thank, thank you, so you much, for everyone. being here. And we're really excited to see what, uh, what this painting turns into. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Okay, everyone. So now we've got 
Isak starting with his painting. And if you saw it the last time he did it, this just becomes magic. So definitely keep an eye on it as we go, because there's a lot that can happen with that painting over the course of this show. Uh, and we are going to introduce our third performer. Uh, so we have Rebecca Horrigan joining us. She's our poet this evening. Uh, Rebecca is a writer and English teacher living in Santa Barbara. She loves music, writing, yoga, food, and nature. She has been published in the LA Times and recently announced her writing will be featured in the book, LA Affairs, True Stories of Nightmare Dates and Happily Ever Afters that will be released on Valentine's Day, 2021. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that after we listen to her poetry, but in her writing and teaching, she hopes to connect with others and encourage those around her to speak their truth. So we are so, so privileged to have Rebecca join us and we're gonna go ahead and listen to her poetry now. Thank you, Ellie, for the introduction and thank you everyone for coming tonight. It means so much to see your faces. So thank you so much for the support. Tonight, I'm going to be reading two new poems and they both have to do with finding hope in this strange world we're in right now. And um, the first one occurred to me, um, I was waking up in the morning, sometimes looking on my phone too much, and then I'd go to the kitchen and I'd see this beautiful um, sunrise out over the Channel Islands and I would just feel so much better and more hopeful. And I felt like I wanted to express that gratitude for the sunrise somewhere, somehow. And so I wrote this poem and it is called, This is Just to Say Thank You. This is just to say thank you for the way the islands sit on the horizon like a mirage floating on the sea. Bathed in a bed of fog below, the ocean a vast expanse. Between now and then, present and future, filled with waves, tides, channels, an untold possibility in the distance, promising beauty in all its hazy, shifting, intangible magic, casting its spell in the current moment, in the sweetness of looking out and the limitless hope within in the earth underfoot, generous present tense, the real miracle. So that was the first one. <laughs> um, the second poem is inspired by the holiday season and this idea that uh, a lot of hardship and suffering could be occurring at the same time where we're finding joy in, in little moments. And this poem is called Lights. We put up our Christmas lights the other day. Well, our version. Two well-meaning wreaths with most of the bulbs intact, perched humbly outside the windows upstairs, like two wide eyes staring out, signaling, we still got it. Our neighbors put them up too, right on the heels of Thanksgiving. Despite a year we'd rather not mark, the strings come out. The tangled mass of icicles or rainbow colors hangs untangled, cleanly draped across the garage, despite the news of suffering, an endless stream that gushes hardship as I habitually flick on NPR and just as quickly shut it off. Yet we switch on inflatable snowmen, bouncing sweetly on the green lawn. A reindeer scene stakes its claim on a friend's rooftop. Impossible snowflakes dance across Southern California windows where inside we work from messy kitchen tables, from couches, from distanced classrooms, from empty restaurants, from crowded hospitals. So many different stories, holding their own brightness, lighthouses in the fog, sharing the anticipation of magic. So we put up our lights and we wait. And that was lights. Thank you so much for listening. Happy holidays. That was 
so beautiful and so timely on so many levels. So thank you. Thank you, Rebecca, for sharing that. And I'm going to go ahead and ask you to join me really quickly so we can just talk about what you've been doing and this book that's coming out in February. Yeah, so thank you again, everyone, for tuning in and watching um, and supporting. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Ellie, for hosting these. It's like so touching and so such a fun community experience. So yeah, I just found out this column I wrote a little over a month ago is going to be part of this compilation of LA Affairs columns um, in a book that's coming out on Valentine's Day. So um, you can pre-order if you're interested in um, columns about love and dating and life. And I'll put the I'll put the link in the chat <laughs> if anyone wants to order. And um, just thank you again for all the support. That's great. Well, thank you, Rebecca. We're so lucky to have you on the show with us tonight. Okay, everyone, so we are zooming along at a casual pace, enjoying this art and music and storytelling compilation that, um, that these performers are providing for us. And so um, with that in mind, we're gonna go back into the world of music and, and have some live bagpipe playing with Davy Frew. So Davy has been an instrumental part of Pangea's Playhouse, both helping me on the back end with tech support, creating and producing the song that is the Pangea's Playhouse theme song, and uh, now we get him here today playing bagpipe. So he's a DJ producer, multi-instrumentalist here in Santa Barbara, and all of his creative pursuits have led him from jazz piano to Scottish bagpiping, electronic dance music, and beyond a musical chameleon of sorts. He always relishes a good opportunity to share his many musical in inter interests and hopes that you enjoy them as much as he does. So Davey, thank you for joining once again. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, hey everyone, thanks for joining tonight. Uh, it's, it feels like it's been forever since the last Pangea show um, and it's really nice to be back in this situation. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna play some pipes tonight for you. I've always kind of enjoyed the sound of bagpipes during the holidays. It kind of brings back warm memories for me. And it's also a nice way to sort of lighten things up in really dark times. So I'm going to play a couple of jigs for you to start. Right, so those two tunes were called Calliope House, uh, which is one of the first pipe tunes I ever learned. And the other one is called The Cook in the Kitchen, which is just, just a fun tune to play. And so uh, the next set of pieces I'm going to play for you uh, is actually known as the Battles set. And contrary to the name, it's actually very upbeat and fun to play. <laughs> Starts slow, ends fast.
So, yep, that was the battle set. I actually really enjoy playing that one as well. Um, and Ellie, if I have a little bit of time left, I can squeeze in. All right, sweet. Um, so this set, I, to be perfectly honest, I don't like to play too often because one of the tunes is one of the world's most overplayed bagpipe tunes, but it being the holidays and all, uh, I think a lot of people find this tune very heartwarming, and I won't tell you what it is because I'm sure you will figure it out yeah. by the end of the set. And I should specify, so there's, there's one tune first, and the second tune is the incredibly popular one. There we go. That is my third and final set for the night, and I feel like ending on Amazing Grace is fairly appropriate. Although I will say a little little aside, um, the the man who taught me how to play bagpipes was a man named Bob Guthrie. Um, so those two tunes are Skylark and Amazing Grace. Uh, we always used to refer to Amazing Grace as a mouse in Greece, and so that set we played together became known as the Bird and the Mouse. And so I will always remember that as the bird and the mouse. But uh, that being said, thanks everybody for showing up tonight. Thank you to all the other artists who are doing an awesome job so far. It's a really good bunch we have here this evening. And of course, thanks to Ellie for emceeing and putting all this stuff on. Thanks, Davey. And for those of you wondering, I know we've got Carolyn and Bob and Elizabeth and a few others who have experienced this. If you want to gift somebody a socially distant instrumental experience, bagpipes are the way to go because you can be. You you can you can stand halfway across, you know, the world, and you'll still be able to hear them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's safe and it's meaningful, especially in this crazy, crazy time we're in. So thank you, Davy, for that. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. All right, everybody. So I want to do two things right now. We're going into intermission, but I want to just check in really quick with Isak and see where we are with the painting. So we're going to um, add spotlight so we can see it's definitely coming along. Those colors are beautiful. Isak, how are you feeling about the painting so far? Oh, I think we've got to get you to unmute. There, there we go. And uh, well, I adjusted the color balance a little bit because it was not a, it was making it. I don't know. It's it's nice pretty close to. How do I feel? Um, I feel good. I'm having fun. That's 
That, that's the one thing, the process is what's important. I'm having a blast. I have great music and poetry and company in spotlight. I love it. <laughs> I, one thing that I'm painting with oils, and one thing that I have to remember is that oils always dry darker. So I have to be very careful not to be too dark. That's true. Well, I it, love it, it like so a week far. Later, it will be, or a month later, it will be much darker than when it first dried. So, but I'm, I'm right. not, how do you feel? I think it's great. And we'll, we'll check in at the end too. So we'll, we'll see where we are once we get to the end of the show as well. So thanks Isak for that. Okay, guys, so this is a part that I really like that's really chaotic and fun. Um, right before we take a little break to get a refill and to use the restroom, if you can go ahead and go into the gallery view so you can see everybody who's on with us tonight, put on your video if you don't have it. You don't have to keep your video on for the whole thing. And if you're in your pajamas or if you're, hopefully you're wearing clothes, I'll say that. That's the, that's the, basis we're going to work with here but um put your video on and i'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone so we can do a huge huge hello so you can say hello to your neighbors you can wave you can dance you can be as silly and nonsensical as you want because this is not a zoom meeting this is a fun event that we're having so um we're going to see how this goes if i unmute everyone at the same time all right oh wait i Happy holidays! Okay, that was great. I hope you got got a little crazy there, had fun with saying hello to everyone. Uh, so we will do this again at the end to celebrate these fantastic artists that we have with us. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna take a short break because this is a longer Zoom event than usual. And so we wanna make sure that you can refill your drinks and snacks at your concession stand of choice use the restrooms without any lines, and then we'll be back in about five minutes to go to our final performer. So enjoy a little break and we'll be back soon.
All right, everyone, welcome back. Oops. There we go. Okay. Hopefully you got your drinks ready to go and you've been able to use the restroom, you have a snack, all of the things needed to enjoy the rest of the show. Um, we've got three incredible performers that we are going to be introducing next. And before we do that, I just wanted to quickly chat about some of the things with intermission. So as you saw, we've had tons of artists come in through Pangea's Playhouse this year. Um, we've had over 200 households and that's unique households join us for these shows. And we've raised over $5,000 that goes straight into the pockets of our performers. And so all of that is just incredible when you think about what's going on with the art uh, industry right now. And I feel very fortunate to be able to do this. And I do wanna just give a huge, huge shout out to Elizabeth Alvarez for convincing me to do this and convincing our team to keep doing it as you know things get hard and it's it's hard to keep trying new things but I really appreciate her energy and her support to make this happen so I wanted to make sure and say that and let you know that because of this show in large we've been able to do a lot of other virtual events and really tap into what we can do on the virtual stage and so if you have any ideas or if you need any support with your events whether it's meetings or nonprofit fundraisers or happy hours um, we have a lot of ideas around that now so um, so it's it's been a blessing on many many different levels so thank you to all of you for joining and thank you Elizabeth for for really supporting us through that okay so let's keep this show going um I'm so looking forward to uh our next performance it's from Lena Alvarez who's a dancer artist musician and environmentalist she started dancing when she was three years old and began to take dancing more seriously when she was 12. Despite the pandemic, Lena has been able to continue dancing with her ballet studio, Oakley Ballet School, aka Footworks Youth Ballet, where she continues to discover more about herself as a performer and artist. Tonight, she will be performing a simplified version of the Waltz of the Flowers from the Nutcracker, as this year would have been her final show with Footworks Ballet. Lena would like to thank both of her parents, along with her ballet teachers, Lauren Bolin and Chris, uh, Kristen Oakley, for continuing to support her journey in classical ballet. And I know, Lena, you wanted to give a little introduction for your performance. So I'm going to go ahead and bring you in as well. Yeah. Hi, Ellie. Hi, everyone. So I just wanted to give a brief explanation before showing my video. So as Ellie mentioned today, I will be performing um, excerpts from Waltz of the Flowers, and I decided to learn the core part as well as the soloist part. And so I combined videos of me doing both parts, so you'll see me kind of switching costumes in a sense. So when I'm dancing in the core part, I'll have kind of a flowery skirt on, and then as the soloist, I get to wear this beautiful crown um, that kind of looks like this and a pink costume. So I hope you guys enjoy. I really enjoyed putting this together. Um, I got to use my mom's office, the camera office. And yeah, so enjoy this little bit of Nutcracker. Great, thank you, Lena. All right, let's go ahead and show the video.
Wow, that was beautiful. And as Amy said, it was ethereal. It was gorgeous. And I think the setting was perfect for it. So great job, Lena. And thank you for sharing that with us. As I mentioned, uh, we will be having all the performers take a bow at the end of the show. So please stick around for that um, because we do wanna give them a huge, huge round of applause all together. Uh, and obviously the comments in the chat box are super great to share right now as well. Going on to our next performer, we have Stephanie Quinn Westfall who will be reading a story for us. Now, Stephanie has been a writer, teacher, and editor for over 20 years. As an independent editor and writing group leader, she works with novelists, screenwriters, mem memoirists, and nonfiction writers. She's currently working on Evidence of Slippage, a no uh, novel about the unexpected gifts of late in life, treachery, and divorce. She can be reached at her LinkedIn page, which I'll share with you afterwards, but that is Stephanie Quinn as well. So Stephanie, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We'll go straight into your story from here. Thank you, Ellie. That's a lovely uh, introduction. So hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining and supporting the artists. And thank you to Ellie for creating such a welcoming online venue for artists. Tonight, I'll be reading from my novel in progress called Evidence of Slippage. The first person narrator is Kathleen Brandt, age 50. And the name of this chapter is Front of the Line. I call my mother at Moraga Royale, the assisted living facility where my brothers and I recently moved her after her diagnosis of Alzheimer's. She answers the phone this time. Did you get your glasses? I ask. No, she says, Alice wanted to get some too. That gives me pause. Alice is my mother's oldest friend. Okay, I know women go to the bathroom together. Do they go get glasses together too? So what's next? Matching wheelchairs and stunts? Shunts, pardon me. My mother's not done though, listing the people who went with her to the eye exam. Shirley and Doris came with me, she says. My aunts live out of state. As my mother's fantasies proliferate, I'm becoming more engaged with them. I conjure up holograms of my Aunt Doris in Colorado and my Aunt Shirley in Boston. Did my mother hold the door open for them in the Kaiser Eye Clinic? Did my aunts need their own chairs or were they content to stand by the side? I'm not sure what constitutes appropriate behavior uh, with holograms or imaginary friends for adults. What did the optometrist tell you, I asked. Oh, I didn't see a doctor, she says. The nurse told me that my right eye is perfect, but there's something wrong with my left eye. She said it's good I have more nutrients in my right eye so that it can help my left eye. My mother pauses as if she suspects that this doesn't really make sense. I'm not sure what that means, mom. These days, I wanna let my mother down easily, protect her from realizing just how far her free range mind travels. I'm not sure either, she chuckles. I mean, do my eyes signal each other in the middle of the night? Here, let me help you. Ha, I say. I envision one eye holding up a lantern and waving at the other eye, like a captain guiding a ship into harbor. My mother interrupts my fantasy with hers. Yes, Kathleen, the aliens are out there in the universe looking for us. This is a new one. My mother's fantasies have never included extraterrestrial life before. Really? The aliens are looking for us? Yes, they are. And if they find me, they'll be sorry. That's when it hits me. My mother is sounding more and more new agey with every passing day. She'd fit right into Ojai, the artsy fartsy town where I live with its dog psychics, crystal wearers and llamas that parade downtown with their owners. Her unexpected remarks make me wonder though if I have failed to grasp her essential self all this time. It reminds me of when I had a romance novel published years ago, the perfect little unconscious but no less powerful for that, screw you, to my highly intellectual and cultured father. Really, he might have been a little less taken aback if I'd simply murdered someone. But it was my mother's reaction that really surprised me. She called the book tame, 
and said she'd expected it to have more sex. Who knows? Maybe she'd always been a freer thinker than I realized. So the aliens wouldn't be happy to find you, I say. I'm not so sure about that, Mom. Well, I am. We laugh together, but not at the same thing. I chuckle at her self-deprecating comments, and then I step away to laugh in a place above the joke. Such moments seem sweeter now, holding as they do both connection and separation. I disapprove of the naughty delight I get from seeing where my mother's wayward synapses will lead her, but that doesn't stop me. And if there were aliens out there watching, they might indeed be sorry if they snagged my mother. Then again, maybe the aliens would think they'd found an oracle, another prophetic priestess from Delphi. My mother would certainly excel at giving opaque and perplexing answers. I'm not the sweet little child I once was, my 78-year-old mo mother says in a sing-song voice. <laughs> Aren't you now? A part of me feels irritated by her ability to surprise me. Wasn't I the clever one in the relationship? I was always the designated imaginative child. Now she's the inventive one, the nonstop creator. I've been supplanted. I realize that this feeling is almost as old as I am. When my mom brought my younger brother, Peter, home from the hospital, I stood at the top of the stairs clutching my doll and informed her, my baby is prettier than your baby. And I've been fighting to regain my power ever since. Now my petty ambitions tire me. How can so much need persist over time? Do humans ever really change? Maybe Alzheimer's really is a gift. The one time in your life when you can actually turn over a new leaf, hell, a whole bloody tree. You can uproot the orchard of your personality and start again, planting avocados next to lemons alongside orange trees in any hodgepodge pattern you want. What a welcome freedom it would be to tear up my old notions of self. Yes, my mother says, I'm entering puberty. <laughs> You're a teenager? That's right. My answers these days involve restating the last outlandish thing she says. I'm starting to feel like a straight man to my mom's stand-up comic. When I was growing up, my mother knew she was the lead-footed one in a family of quick wits. For every lame joke she attempted, not that there were many, she was never stupid, she apologized. And then the rest of us would laugh at her, feeling indulgent and superior. Now. She has all the best lines. <laughs> I'm happy for her. I wish she knew how funny she's become. She'd be delighted to find out that she made people laugh with her. Although upon closer reflection, I realize I'm still laughing at her. What short shrift I've given her over the years, how limited I made her in my mind. Yes, I'm a teenager, my mother crows over the phone. Look out. Well, I certainly gave you and dad a hard enough time when I was a teenager. I say, it's your turn. That's right, she says, it is my turn. Nine months ago, when my mother first received her Alzheimer's diagnosis, I talked to my brother Peter about how unfair it seemed that this disease should strike her at this moment. Our father had recently passed away and it was finally our mother's turn to travel, visit her kids, live an unfettered life. But that wasn't possible anymore. Peter said, yeah, she's finally at the front of the line, but she has no idea what line she's in. I don't have enough hats, my mother announces. Hats for what? For all the different things I'm going to do as a preteen. In 50 years, I have never seen my mother wear a hat. Well, except for the photograph of my parents on their wedding day. They stood on the steps outside the courthouse near the Fort Benning Army Base in Georgia, just after the civil ceremony. My mother wore a creamy calf length 50s dress with a fitted bodice and flared skirt. And she tucked her long dark hair up under a stylish hat. That's the most dressed up I've ever seen her. We'll get you some hats, mom. 
Good. She's actually excited at the prospect. Who knows? Maybe she'll add fashion to the list of things she suddenly cares about, including beautiful scenery, parties, and the way food tastes. How is all your schoolwork, Kathleen? She asks. My mother can't seem to remember that I'm in grad school, so she's always confused about what it is I'm supposed to be doing, a trait I realize I share with her. I suspect she's conflated my years as a high school teacher with her 30 year career as an elementary school teacher. In her mind, I'm always correcting papers or planning lessons. I've got a lot to do, I say, but I'll get it done. Good. She sounds firm and grounded like her old self. Just do your normal thing and you'll be fine. My heart beats a little faster. Is this a vote of confidence from my mother? I haven't had that many from her, so I'm not even sure what they'd sound like. My normal thing, I repeat, even though I know it's pathetic. I'm hoping I can nudge her into using some more thrilling adjectives like amazing, brilliant, or talented, something a little sexier than responsible or competent. Yes, you know, she says, the way you normally behave and get things done. My psyche hangs on the edge of the fence, hoping for the rest of the compliment, for a flat out, unreserved, lush statement of belief in me. It embarrasses me that I still have such need for her approval. Her mind is failing her and I'm demanding proof of her love. And all the while she's losing sight of the defenses she built to protect herself from, from what? I realize I don't know. From emotion, from hope, from love and its inevitable disappointment. I wonder, can she still muster enough of her former self to stop a hair's breadth short of giving unalloyed approval. So how are your two youngsters? My mother asks, redirecting the conversation. Yes, my mother still has some of her powers. She may not know what line she's in, but damn it, she's not budging to let me go first. Inwardly, I cheer her on. Even her old coldness is a welcome visitor. Behind the fantasies, the hats, the out-of-state relatives, the aliens, there's a glimmer of my mother still. <clears throat> my original mother, my frustrating, put-upon, beloved mother. I welcome her into my heart and fold my wings around her. Thank you. Ooh, that was beautiful and it had me with the ups and the downs and everything in between you are a wonderful storyteller stephanie thank you thank you it's uh, not i know hmm? go ahead go ahead no i was just going to say it's so, so different from the other pieces of art and acts and music etc so i really appreciate people listening to a story read out loud Absolutely. Well, I think that's what Pangea's is all about, is bringing in different types of art. And your stories are a very, very important part of that. So, so thank you for joining us and for doing that for us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. So to keep the show going, uh, that was so wonderful. Okay, let's see. We've had music. We've had live art. We've had poetry, we've had bagpipes, we've had ballet, we've had stories, and now we're going to finish with some music from, I'm, I think I might call her the queen of virtual concerts right now. Uh, Stephanie Schmitz has been doing a live concert every day uh, through social media and has really perfected the art of, um, of this new virtual music world that we're in. So Stephanie, I know, um, I'm going to give you a quick bio introduction, and then I would love for you to tell us a little bit about what you're doing today. Um, Stephanie is a multi-instrumentalist, artist, and teacher in San Diego. She plays clarinet, saxophone, and percussion. She performs around town with her Brazilian dance band, 
Gypsy Jazz Group and in the Orchestra for Lambs Players Theater. As an educator, Stephanie teaches clarinet and saxophone as well as Brazilian drumming in schools through the Center for World Music. During the pandemic, you can see her play a song every day at 2 p.m. via Facebook Live, and she has social distance collaboration videos on her YouTube channel. Again, we'll be sharing all of this in our recap video, but Stephanie, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you so much for having me back to Pangea's Playhouse. And thanks to all the edgy experiences team. You guys are awesome. And thank you to all of you for tuning in tonight, especially my friends and family who are going to watch two shows of mine this weekend. So thank you guys in advance. And uh, this is going to be a little bit of uh, I don't get to play holiday music that much, so I'm taking advantage of the opportunity. I think we all need it. So thanks for indulging me. And this is some of the experimenting I've been doing during the pandemic with technology and green screens. And well, you'll see. Enjoy and cheers to all the wonderful performers. What an amazing night of eclectic art. It's been beautiful. Thanks to all of you. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and show that video. Thanks everyone. I'm Stephanie Schmitz. I play the clarinet and saxophone in San Diego. I'm so happy to be back here on this virtual stage at Pangea's Playhouse. Thank you Ellie and Edgy Experiences for inviting me back. And thanks to all of you who purchased tickets and are tuning in with us tonight. Thanks for also indulging me in a little bit of holiday magic. <laughs> I think during the year we are having that we just need a little bit of Christmas. <laughs> And I've been experimenting a lot during this time at home with, uh, with technology, so it's been a lot of fun. This is a tune now from my typical repertoire, which is Brazilian music. It's a song called Bebe by Hermeto Pascual, accompanied by my good friend Joe Amato on the guitar.
Thank you. And thank you, Joe. We're going to do another Christmas song. And uh, I mentioned I've been experimenting a lot with, with technology <laughs> during the, this time at home and playing a lot by myself as well. So here is a rendition of Sleigh Bells by the Stephanie Schmitz Sextet. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my set, and cheers to all the other performers tonight. Thanks again, Edgy Experiences, and all of the virtual audience members. And stay in touch at stephanieschmitz.net. You can sign up for my mailing list. You can subscribe and hit the notification bell on YouTube to find out when I go live, which is often during the pandemic. I play a song live every day at 2 p.m. on Facebook, and sometimes it goes to YouTube as well. The Steph Show number five is a solo concert I'm presenting this Sunday, December 20th at 6 p.m. Pacific, and you can watch that for free on my YouTube channel. And uh, wishing everybody a safe holiday, whatever holiday you celebrate. I hope you can connect with loved ones, even if it's virtual. And thanks for watching. Wow. So... That was how we're ending our show tonight. And I don't think there's any better way of doing that. Um, I was gonna say thank you to my seven performers tonight, but I think now I have to say thank you to all 12 with all the Stephanie. So we'll we'll get there in a second. Now, um, thank you to every, every single one of you, all 54 households that are joining tonight. What we're gonna do right now is do a final check-in with Isak and his painting is looking absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna bring him in and then we're gonna ask all of our performers to do a standing bow. So let's check in on Isak first.
Okay. Isaac, you want to unmute yourself there? Hi. Uh, this is taking such a beautiful turn. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I have a uh, Lina there, and there's a lot of the Stephanies. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, and normally, with oil, you have to wait until it dries before you do another layer, but I was. Uh, trying to get as much done as possible. So I went to a smaller brush, which normally I only like to wash, I'm very lazy, so I only like to wash one brush. Uh, so I only use one brush. <laughs> but I, I chose a smaller brush and I'm messing with it. Just like life, Just mess with it until you like it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And and we'll um we'll actually put a link for this painting on our follow-up email. So if you're interested in bidding on it or you know somebody that might be interested, um, we'll have that link available after the show. So thank you, Isaac, for sharing that with us and for creating thank this you. masterpiece in such a short period of time. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone. So now it is time to, I know you've been holding in all of your applauses or you may have been applauding people, but we couldn't hear you because you were muted. And so this is the time where we're gonna ask all of our performers to stand up and give a bow and we will unmute everyone one more time. So if you wanna go into gallery view, that's gonna be the best way to see it. So you can see as many people as possible. We've got a big, big group here, which is so fantastic. But we're going to try and see as many people as we can here. So we're going to go ahead and mute. And remember, we can hear everything. So the louder you applaud, the better. And you're going to be more likely for us to hear. So let's go ahead and applaud all of our performers. Bravo! Bravo! Yeah! So oh, 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 Fantastic! Well done. Hey, I house. Woo! I house. Love you, Ray. Love you, family. Well, you know it. Okay, guys, that was so fantastic. And again, I just I appreciate all of you, and I'm seeing you in a big, big gallery view right now. So I can see all of you, and I. I'm so glad you were able to join us tonight and hopefully this brought some holiday cheer to you. I know it certainly brought holiday cheer to me and we will be doing another show in January, January 15th, if you wanna mark your calendars with a whole new cast, but we are really, really honored to have all these performers with us and to have the edgy team that's grown and been able to help with this throughout the year. So have a wonderful evening, stay safe and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you, Ellie.